Hello and welcome back to another week of the Korean Beauty Show podcast. I'm your host, Lauren Lee, founder of Australia's first online K-beauty store, Style Story, and your guide to the world of all things K-beauty. Now, Tuesday is, of course, our news headlines and update episode for everything new that is going on in the world of K-beauty. So I am going to jump straight into the headlines for this week. And the first one was the news that LG Household and Healthcare, one of the biggest uh owners, I guess you could say, of K-Beauty, one of the biggest conglomerates uh, that runs lots and lots of different brands here in Korea, they have acquired a controlling stake in Cream Shop, which is an LA-based brand that manufactures both cosmetics and beauty products. Now, the Cream Shop targets customers in their teens and 20s, and obviously being LA-based, the main uh, you know target market for them is people in the States. So this was a really interesting interesting acquisition, I thought. And I saw a couple of, there were lots of different news uh, outlets that were reporting on this news. But basically the deal is that the cream shop has averaged 30% growth with its cosmetics business in the last three years. And there were different, I guess, reasons given for why LG Household and Health may have acquired the business. So the first one is obviously, you know, that they are trying to strengthen their competitiveness in North America. That seems to make a whole lot of sense. So basically what they've done is they've they, they've acquired a controlling stake, but they've also signed what is called a call option to purchase the remaining stake in the business in five years time. So that's just a, a really common thing that you will see in mergers and acquisitions. Uh, so that's what they've done. Now, other news outlets were reporting this a little bit differently, and they were saying that this is a sign that LG H&H is moving its focus towards the States to make up for decline sales and popularity in China. Uh, and that what they were saying that the Chinese market accounted for 16% of LG H&H's total sales. Uh, but if they in- include also the duty-free revenue from the Chinese sales, that increases to about 38%. So basically what a lot of industry watchers are saying is that LG he- he- Household and Healthcare is too reliant on the Chinese market. So this acquisition is seen as a sign that they are trying to lessen their reliance on China and move into North America. So that was just an interesting piece of news that was doing the rounds for this week. Uh, and another, I guess, US-based piece of news news I can give you guys is the good news that Dewy Glaze Toner, Jellico's newest product, is now available in the States. You can purchase it online at veryshop.com. That is V-E-R-I shop.com. So that's another really good piece of news for our customers in the States. Uh, You can get it delivered to you domestically from within the States from Very Shop. Now, the other really interesting one that I came across was uh, a a piece that Kotra put out. So Kotra is basically uh, the trade organization that promotes Korean exports and trade and things like that. So Kotra was highlighting that there are a lot of growing opportunities for Korean beauty products in Laos. Uh, And what they were saying was that Laos' skincare market has actually doubled from 2015 to 2020. And Korea's cosmetic exports to Laos has shot up over 100% last year. So what they're saying is that the growing trend and preference for K beauty products may be because of how popular K beauty is in Thailand. And what they were saying was was really interesting is that Laotian consumers are preferring to stick to the K beauty products that are already trending popular that are, have already been vetted basically in Thailand. So what Kotra was saying was that they think that any K beauty companies that are already successfully selling their products in Thailand, it will be easier for them to move into the Laotian market. So I thought that was really really interesting. It looks like people in Laos are getting a lot more into their K-beauty, but kind of being a little bit guided by what's going on next door in Thailand. So that was just another one doing the, the rounds this week for our wrapping up our news headlines update. Now, for the question of the week this week, you guys will know that normally what I do is I answer your questions. And if you are wanting to have your question answered on the show, please do get in touch with either me or our team. You can do that at admin at stylestory.com.au, which is just our general admin email inbox. 
box where everything gets sent to us and then farmed out to the best person to answer it. So feel free to drop your question in there if you have one. But for this week, what I thought was, I'm going to ask you guys to, you know, answer your own questions. So what I did is I popped one in our Facebook group and I asked, what is the best skin tip you've learned to this day? Uh, And so we had two really, really great answers in the Facebook group. The first one was double cleansing, total game changer for me. Uh, And I must say, I completely agree with this 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 tip as well. I think for me also double cleansing was an absolute game changer. Uh, so I'm really happy to hit, to see that that was one of the tips. And another one, which I 100% support this one as well, was sunscreen all day, every day. Again, I couldn't agree more. So thank you t- so much to our two Facebook group members who answered that question. If you haven't already joined our Facebook group. The group is K Beauty Down Under. Uh, It's Style Stories Facebook group, hence the name Down Under. You can come and find us. uh, Stylestory.au is uh, Style Stories Facebook uh, account, and then the group is attached to it. Uh, So I would love if you aren't already in the group to come in and obviously let us know what the best skin tip you've learned is. Now, I also put this up on my Instagram stories as well, just to see if we could get a few different answers answers and of course everyone came through with some great ones so here are a few more of the best skin tips that people have learnt to this day the first one was using layers of cotton pads and tone up for a DIY mask to hydrate problem areas and reduce puffy under eye and this is such a real I love this one I use this one myself so basically uh if you if you aren't familiar with this what you can do is get some of the, you know, the cotton pads, the cotton rounds, anything like that, and use a really juicy hydrating toner, soak some, soak it into the pads, and then you literally just pop them all over your face wherever you're trying to target. So if you have maybe a really, really dry under eye area, maybe you've got a dry forehead, wherever, you literally just soak a cotton pad in a hydrating toner and pop it on your face for five to 10 minutes. That's all you need. And then you can just throw them out. It's literally a DIY mask. So I love that one. Thank you so much for sharing that one. Uh, Another one is that skin should feel tacky for a while after your skincare is applied. Otherwise you need more moisture. That's a really, really good one. And I don't even know if we've ever discussed this one on the show before, but I think that's a really great one. You know, sometimes people get a little put off if after they've done their skincare, you know, their skin is, feels a little bit wet. But I think that's really true that the, the products usually do take a tiny bit of time to actually sink into your skin. So if your skin feels tacky after you've applied your skincare, don't necessarily freak out. I mean, if it's still feeling really tacky like hours later, that's not great, or oily or shiny hours later, that might be an issue. But I think that's a really, really good one. So thank you so much for that tip. The next one was my best skin tip is to use a toner. My skin changed for the better the day I added it to my routine. So I think toners uh, get such a bad rap. A lot of people don't see the point. A lot of people have really terrible memories of using, you know, just a toner that maybe stripped their skin of its moisture, that stung their skin, that was really... um, you know, one of those kind of ones that's designed to like dry the skin out if you've got acne prone skin, you know, but if you don't have acne prone skin, using something like that can be a little bit of a disaster. So that's a really, really good point. I think with toner, the most important thing is to pick the right one for your skin concern and your skin type. Uh, I personally use toner every single day, twice a day. In fact, I love toner. I think it's an essential step, but I do think that if you are using the wrong product for your skin type, you can run into all sorts of problems and get a really bad impression of what a toner is supposed to be. So thank you so much for that tip. I love it. That's a great one. And the last one we had to round out the list was hydrate, hydrate, hydrate in winter. So of course that is so, so, so important. Uh, You know, and I mean, hydration is really what K-beauty is all about. So that is such a great tip. Thank you so much to everyone who sent their response in. Really appreciate it. And I hope you guys have picked up some new ones from that list as well. So for this week's new roundup of K-Beauty products, 
Now, these are products that have recently landed on the Style Story website. So I'm going to run through two new ones that have just landed. Now, the first one is Medifoam's Trouble Care Patch. And what this is in a nutshell is it's one of the micro dart type of pimple patches. So these are the ones who I would recommend these kind of ones for is people that get really, really deep pimples deep below the surface of the skin. If that is you, then the micro dart ones are, can be a good option. Normal pimple patches, normal, normal hydrocolloids, they cannot target things that are hiding under the skin. So that's why they're not great for blind pimples or any of those kind of things, because they're literally aimed to suck up the juice, whatever is hanging out on top of your skin. That's kind of how they work. Whereas the ones that have the micro needles or darts or whatever you want to call them, they are better suited for people that get the ones that are deeper below the surface of the skin. So these are 1.4 centimeters in diameter. So they're quite big, I guess, you know, compared to normal pimple patches. And I guess that's because if you've got something deeper under the skin, it's usually going to be quite bigger. And unlike a lot of pimple patches, these ones actually have the Medifoam Trouble Care ones actually contain ingredients. Uh, so um, and that, you know, that's a really personal preference, whether you like pimple patches that have ingredients in them or not. If you are really prone to, you know, breaking out from different ingredients, if you have really sensitive skin, Sometimes the medicated ones or the ones that actually have um, ingredients in them are not the best option, but they can be a really, really good option for these deeper type of pimples. And what these ones contain is salicylic acid, which is obviously a really, really great acne fighting ingredient. They contain hyaluronic acid, which is to try and help keep the skin moist while you are applying the patch. And then matacasis aside, which is an antioxidant. It's also one of the key components in Centella Asiatica. So just a really, really nice ingredient for skin that is, you know, suffering from pimples and things like this. So they are new. They are up on the Style Story website at the moment. Uh, and I believe there are nine in a pack. Yes, nine each of, of, of each of them in a pack. So they are new. If you're looking for something like that, go and check them out. Uh, this is a very, very popular brand here in Korea. It's called Medifoam Trouble Care Patches. Now, the second one is a new product from a new brand, actually. The brand is called Mary and May, and this is their Niacinamide and Kina Belize sinensis fruit extract so if you've seen this and you're like i don't know how to pronounce it it's it's spelled c-h-a-e-n-o-m-e-l-e-s and that is pronounced kina may lees what it actually is another name for it the non-latin name for it is chinese quince so i'm just going to run with that because that rolls off the tongue a hell of a lot easier so basically this serum it's a serum it's 30 mils the brand is marion may and marion may is a new brand that has um sort of been released recently they are the whole brand concept is you know clean beauty they're really really leaning into the whole ewg green grade thing which i've spoken about at length so i'm not going to go into that again uh, but this particular serum is an excellent source of vitamin C and antioxidants, and it's going to be really good to help brighten your skin tone and also to soften your skin texture. A couple of things that you need to know about it if you are looking to get into it. So firstly is how it performs. It absorbs really quickly on the skin and it's not sticky. It does work by helping to reduce skin troubles and balance your oil production. So I think that's who it's going to be really, really good for. It doesn't have any artificial fragrances. It is cruelty free if that is something that you are looking for. Uh, it also doesn't have any artificial colors either. It doesn't have alcohol in it, uh, which, you know, alcohol serves lots of different functions in the skincare formula. But if for whatever reason that causes problems for you, it's not in there. Uh, so it actually has 93% of the Chinese quince fruit extract as the first ingredient. So quite a lot uh, and a really nice way to brighten the skin in a way that is, you know, containing natural vitamins, but it, it doesn't have the same stability issues as the L-ascorbic acid. It's also got 2% niacinamide as well, which is a very effective amount for uh, lots and lots 
lots of different skin benefits. So go and check that one out if you are in the market for something like that. That product once more is Mary and May's Niacinamide and Kina May Lee's Sinensis Serum. Uh, so two new products up on the website for you there to go and check out. Now, there have also been a couple of new reviews that have come through. So I have two on my list for this week. The first one is a five-star review for Misha's Time Revolution First Treatment Essence. And our reviewer said, I've just started exploring K-Beauty. As a long-term skincare lover, I'm so impressed with this essence. I've never used an essence before, and this has definitely improved my skin's hydration. I love that it has no scent and the bottle is beautiful. So that one, uh, very, very popular product, obviously Misha's uh, first, uh, t- their Time Revolution first treatment essence, uh, or the FTE, you'll sometimes see it referred to online as FTE. That's what they're referring to if you ever see that. Misha FTE is the first the first treatment essence. Uh, so the second review was for April B's Collagen Peptide Moisture cream. Uh, And the reviewer said, great intro to K-Beauty. This is my first K-Beauty purchase and I am so impressed by the elegant texture and feel of this cream on my skin. I've been using it for less than a month and have noticed a real improvement to the moisture levels of my skin. This will not be my last K-Beauty purchase from Star Story. Thank you very much to our reviewer. And this one, guys, I cannot tell you how popular this product is at the moment. Uh, I just think it's such a great popular... I think the reason why it's so popular is because it is such a great option for mature skin. We just cannot get, seem to keep this one on off on the shelves. It just flies off whenever it comes uh, in. Uh, so that one, a really, really popular one. Uh, Mother's Day is coming up. That's the other thing that we should probably um, keep on your radar as well. If you haven't already sorted your gift out for mum in Australia, uh, Mother's Day is coming up soon. So I think this is actually a really, really great product that I would definitely be recommending to people. Uh, you know, if you're maybe trying to think of something to give your mom or, you know, you, you know that your mom's been looking for a really nice moisturizer, that is definitely the one that I would suggest. April B's Collagen Peptide Moisture Cream. I do not think you can go wrong with that product uh, for mom, grandma, anyone like that. I think it's it'll be a hit for sure. Uh, now, To round off our episode, you will know that for the last couple of weeks, I have been doing a recommendation of the week. So I'm going to finish up today's episode with my recommendation for you guys. And this was actually prompted by uh, a follower on Instagram who was asking uh, about nail art and where I get my nails done. Uh, She was mentioning that she had, you know, fallen in love with Korean nail art. And then it occurred to me that there is actually one account that is just so, so, so popular, and that is Unistella underscore KR. Now, Unistella is a really, really famous uh, nail salon. It is run by a Korean nail artist called Park Eun Kyung, and she is probably one of the most in-demand nail artists in Korea, I would say. Uh, She was the one who started the glass nails trend back in like 2015. If you remember that, it was basically nails that look like shattered pieces of glass. She has started so many trends that you will then see sort of, you know, repeated all over the world. Probably ones that you wouldn't even necessarily realize were originally Korean. High chances are that it started with her. So she's a really great one to follow if you are, you know, looking for inspiration, if you're looking to see what the most up-to-date trends are in Korean nail art. Uh, Park and Kyung has worked with everyone from Blackpink, uh, Bella Hadid, Carla Delevingne, like lots and lots of different celebrities. And if I had to describe her style, obviously she's a trendsetter. She's a leader in the industry. People sort of watch her and watch what she does and then, you know, create their own versions of it in their salons. But I would say she has a really, really huge impact on nail trends here in Korea. 
Her style is very eclectic. Uh, you will often notice that like no two nails are exactly the same. And that is very, very popular in Korean nail art to have like, you know, lots of different things going on on every nail. They don't even necessarily all need to be the same color. Lots of art designs and things like that that are done by hand. Uh, so she is really, really, really popular. Um, I've never been to her. I've never been to her salon only because I just figured that it'd be so hard to get into. And to be honest, there are a lot of other really, really good nail artists in Korea. Uh, and you know, you can always see people doing versions of what she's done anyway, but I know a lot of people have like travel who travel here do actually go to her when they're here. You definitely can. You can book in at her salon. I'm not sure how often she would actually be there just because of how in demand she is. Like she does shoot and things like that for magazines here. Um, she'll do lots and lots of different celebrity nails for their shoots as well. Uh, but she is definitely one to follow, one to watch if you are after inspiration. And if you are into Korean nail art, go and check out unistella underscore kr on instagram she's great i love her uh i am going to leave it here for this week or this tuesday's episode rather i will be back on thursday with a deep dive episode and until then i will see you on star story bye